Hello, everybody. I'm Krasia Tasiu, and I have the pleasure to have with me a very interesting, very knowledgeable guest. And this is Habaji, who is a Vedic astrologer and who, like me, follows the rules of the ancients. And that is why I invited him, because you know how um, I, much I really follow the, only the ancient uh, wisdom. Uh, therefore, seeing the interesting videos of Habajit on his channel, uh, uh, Exotic Astrology, I found that he's the exact person to discuss the eclipses with. So first we'll look at the eclipses from the point of view of the ancients, both Babylonians and Indians, Vedics. And then I suggest that if you like, we look at the eclipses, the two eclipses, the very recent ones, and what will they uh, bring us because this is these are actually very serious eclipses right not to joke with <laughs> very nice to uh, to see you here and thank you Prabhaji, for accepting my invitation yeah my pleasure thank you very much madam for giving me this honor to come to your channel and in, in fact when i saw the topic i was very much interested because eclipses is something which is always in the minds of everybody even even the scientists who may or may not believe in astrology, but they also know there's something called as eclipse. <laughs> mm -hmm. Tell me, um, I, you know, in, the, in, in Babylon, they would really, really emphasize enormously on the eclipses. They would keep diaries and they would not look with a very positive eye towards eclipses, especially the lunar ones. And there, was, there were the kings who would have their towels in their temples and they would really watch and analyze. Tell me, what is the Vedic perspective? How ominous is this? Give us some overview of the eclipses um, according to the ancient Indians. Yeah, so if you want to understand eclipse, you must understand uh, three planets. One is Sun, the other one is Moon, and the other one is of course Rahu. <laughs> Rahu, <laughs> yeah. Because unless you understand what Rahu is, you cannot understand Ketu. Why you say why you didn't say also Ketu? Yeah, because first you understand Rahu, then you understand Ketu. All right, all right. All right. Yeah. So what is the sun basically? So sun in one word, if I would summarize, sun is the kingdom. Now what is what do you mean by kingdom? Kingdom means okay, you know, Alexander the Great had a big kingdom. Like Emperor Akbar had a big kingdom in India. Well, what if I told you, you also have a kingdom? <laughs> yes, everybody in this world has a kingdom. They don't realize that. But the only difference is the size. Absolutely, yeah. Yes, now in my kingdom, I have my laptop. Yes, I can use this, I can throw this, I can donate this, I can buy a new one. Yes, if I have the finances. <laughs> I can do whatever I want with this laptop. There's nobody to stop me. Of course, somebody can advise me that, hey, why are you breaking this uh, nice laptop? You, know, you shouldn't do like this. You're going crazy. But still, it is my decision. Yeah. Yes. I have this book which you see on the back side. I can burn it. Or maybe I can take it and read. <laughs> <laughs> so, sun represents the conception of being in this world means that the very fact that we exist in this world yes that's what the sun is and now you may think oh but a beggar may not have a kingdom right but he still feels he exists yes so everybody feels that he or she exists in this world that feeling of i you know i am somebody you know i am someone i may be president of a country or i may be a teacher or an astrologer but I am somebody, right? And I am unique and I am distinct from everybody else. Nobody is like me. Certainly. So that's what the sun is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now what is the moon? Moon is the reflection. It means moon tells you, okay, you have a kingdom, suppose. Yes. Maybe you have a small house or you have a big country to rule over whatever it is irrespective of the size how do you feel about that 
okay suppose i have a very big kingdom but i don't feel good you know when i enter the kingdom people somehow the people there they are like ah, why these people are existing why they don't agree to what i say why do they not support me or how much do they support me how much love am i getting from my kingdom kingdom means our society the people we know society doesn't mean anybody in general but the people who we know how much support are we able to derive from the society because moon is the reflection you see the light of the sun is being reflected so you have something how much of that are you able to feel to yourself and that is why in traditional vedic astrology moon is more important than the sun yeah also in babylon same yes why because suppose you have a big kingdom which means a very strong sun or a great placed sun in a good 10th house or you know like a great house like the 5th house or the 9th house or the lagna in a great dignity like aries or leo or sagittarius then but suppose you don't feel good about the kingdom yeah yes suppose you don't like the people who you are with then what is the use of the kingdom you will be miserable there you never be happy in such a kingdom but suppose you have a small kingdom you know you have a small home you know two three people in your home you know your husband your wife your mother father and you have a small shop small business you know it's like that's it. that's your kingdom but suppose you are very happy there so then uh, which is better the first one or the second one obviously the second one right absolutely so that is why the moon is more important so now what happens when there is an eclipse basically eclipses technically happen when sun and moon are in very close proximity with rahu or ketu that's what is an eclipse right i mean mm -hmm. astrologically if you want to know so like on 2nd july uh, the eclipse was in gemini according to vedic astrology sign sidereal and rahu was in gemini it is still in gemini and it will be in gemini for a long time and sun and moon were also in gemini although they were in a different nakshatra sun and moon were in the nakshatra of ardra inside gemini and rahu was in punarvasu nakshatra inside gemini all right and because they were quite close i would say degree kali some say 12 degrees or 15 degrees you know if they are in that close proximity then they call it an eclipse so now what happens during an eclipse during the eclipse what happens is see sun and moon represent literally everything that we have in life and i feel somehow in astrology these two are unfortunately the most ignored planets you will hardly find people talking about sun and moon they will only talk of saturn they will talk of rahu they will talk of ketu they will talk of venus they will talk of they will talk of mercury okay so that's very unfortunate that many times the most two important planets which represent us because when you say what, what do you always hear people telling hear people telling i have a problem right my job is not going good my wife is not Uh, cooperating with me my uh, children are not listening to me or my parents are fighting with me it is all, it always starts with the sun you see i me and mine <laughs> if the sun doesn't exist then we don't exist true absolutely. and the, if the moon doesn't exist even if you exist there is no use of existing so now then the question comes what is rahu well you have to bit go to the history of the sagar manthan which happened so if i would uh, cut the long story short once there was a truce between the demigods and the demons uh, that you know there is a great ocean which you have to churn and once you churn the ocean there are priceless things which will come out from the ocean all right and sorry sorry repeat the last uh, the last sentence i think we were lost repeat uh, the last sentence yeah so there is a there there's a great ocean ocean okay? yes 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 and if you churn the ocean 
Yes. There will be beautiful things which will come out from the ocean, priceless, which you will never get anywhere else. Okay. So that is where for the first time the demigods, the devatas and the demons, the asuras, they agreed because everybody wants, you know, materialistic stuff. You know, that is why they say, you know, whenever it's about money, everybody is of the same religion. Oh. <laughs> yeah. There's no quarrels. There's no, no nothing. No. If it's no. about money, then we are all the same. You know, it's like, anyways. Yes. <laughs> so then Lord Vishnu told uh, that, okay, so we will give you a snake and we will give you a mountain. All right. So you will put the mountain like this and the snake you will one hand or the one side of the snake will be in the hands of the demons and the other side will be in the hands of the devatas, the demigods. All right. And uh, by this you will churn the snake, you know, like this <laughs> and the mountain will go round and round and by that the churning will happen and all the uh, beautiful stuff will come out from the oceans. And that is, that's the place from where so many things came out. So what happened initially, the Lord, Lord Vishnu told the demons that, you know, you hold the backside, the tail. Okay. And he told the demigods, the devatas, you hold the front side, you know, the hoods of the snake, that side. And uh, when the demons heard this, they were like, oh my God, this is injustice, you know. We will hold the back side. No, we will not hold. We will hold the front side. <laughs> because the demons, most of the, of the times, they are foolish. They are headless. You know, they only go by sense perception. They don't, they, don't, they don't have intelligence to figure out why something could happen the way it is happening. So they just see, okay, front is, you know, limelight. Back is, you know, no limelight. So we want the limelight. So then they, they were uh, pro protesting and they were objecting, you know, like people do these days. You know, we will fight, we will fight. You know? <laughs> so then what happened? Lord Vishnu said, okay, exchange. You go to the front and the demigods go to the backside. You uh, go and catch the tail, okay? So then what happened? The front side, the snake, you know, his name was Vasuki. He has a lot of hoods, you know. Mm -hmm. Multi-hooded, like in uh, in Greek mythology, I think there is one snake called Hydra or something like that. You know, multi-hooded. To ask you about this. So, yeah, yeah, tell me. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, some something of that sort. You can think, you know. And then the hoods were, you know, emitting poison. You know, and then the demons they could not breathe. You know, they were suffocating. They were like, oh my god, we will die. <laughs> So actually they had, they would have been very peaceful and happy if they would have, you know, stayed at the back. But sometimes that's where Rahu comes in, you know, Rahu will eventually come, you know. So, but the thing is people just go to directly Rahu, they don't see the background. Every story has a lesson. In the background also this is a lesson. The, that sometimes in the name of seeking, you know, uh, superficial name and fame, we end up... Uh, including poison in our lives, right? Just to show off others that, you know, we own so much in life. And then, of course, they were churning, churning, churning. And then at the first poison came out, you know, that was known as halahal. And when that poison came out, it was so deadly. The demigods went to, uh, and the demons, they went to Lord Shiva and said that, oh, Lord Shiva, please uh, protect the universe by drinking this poison. And then Lord Shiva drank it and that is why his uh, neck is, you know, blue. He's known as Neil Kant. Ah, yes. Yes. And then uh, so many other things came out. You know, there was a divine elephant known as Airavat, which Indra uses. Indra is the king of the uh, demigods, the devatas. He's, uh, that's his, you know, Mercedes. <laughs> Just a his... bracket before you continue, because it's very interesting. I love the mythological stories because the truth is there in the mythology. No doubt yes. about it. In, uh, in the Babylonian mythology, you have this dragon called Tiamat, which on the sky we find as the big Hydra, you know, which starts somewhere in, uh, uh. in uh, Cancer and ends up in Libra. You know, it actually crosses huge uh, 
dragon on the sky. Uh, but then Mercury, a uh, god, uh, Marduk, came and defeated this Hydra. You know, the Tiamat. Oh. So it was, oh, no, sorry, did I say Mercury? Apologies. Jupiter, this was Marduk. Uh -huh. okay. Marduk, Jupiter, came and defeated um, Tiamat, mm. the dragon. But the dragon actually is the mother goddess because we actually, um, Abzu and Tiamat were the two primeval waters from, from where the, the universe started. Does it make sense if you compare with the uh, Vedic um, mythology? Like the, it all started with this dragon actually. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, in fact, there were many snakes uh, who the demigods had approached that please mm -hmm. come and, you know, uh, coil yourself in that mountain. That mountain name was, you know, Mandhar Parvat. Mandhar was the name of the mountain. But most of the uh, snakes said, no, 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 no. You will, you will tear my body, you know, right, left. I'm not going and participating there. And there, there was one, this special snake called Vasuki, which Lord Vishnu ordered that, no, you must go there. You know, it is my instruction. <laughs> and then Vasuki was like, okay, whatever you say. <laughs> Okay, so then finally what happened, there was uh, a divine liquid which came out. It was known as Amrita. Amrita means death. Amrita means uh, that drink which makes you kind of immortal. Not exactly because the demigods, they are not immortal. They live up till one, one, one thara. That's a separate calculation which I will explain in some other video maybe. So their life is very, very, very long. For 71 Divya Yugas they live and one Divya Yuga is combination of Satya Yuga, Dwapar Yuga, Treta Yuga and Kali Yuga according to the Srimad Bhagavatam. So like that for 71 Divya Yugas, which is a combination of these four Yugas, they live. All right. So from earthly calculation, it seems as if they are, you know, immortal because it's a very long life, you know, from, yeah. from, from our point earth. of view, of course. Yeah. And, uh, but then what happened this amrit came out all right and uh, then the demons they snatched this amrit okay and that's the precarious situation of the demons that when they got this nectar they forgot that we are demons and they are demigods they started quarreling among themselves you know they're like they're like, no, 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 I will take this, you know, no, 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 he will, he will not get, I will get, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine, it's not yours. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And then there are many demons who start speaking uh, different political, uh, like, we have different ideologies like socialism, communism, you know, don't date yourself, give everybody, you know, so many demons start speaking like that, you know. No, yes. no, actually, no, one person should not take. You must share it. You know? <laughs> because they know if they don't speak like this, they will not get the nectar. Uh -huh. And Yes, so they make all this, uh, these kind of political statements they give. Okay. So then what happened? The demigods realized that now we will not get this nectar. And the problem with demons is uh, because they have no spiritual inquisitiveness, the moment they get power, they will terrorize the universe. They will create trouble. They will create rakas everywhere. And they will dismantle the order of the society. Like there was a demon called Hiranyakashyap. He made a new rule that the more you do wrong, the, the, the higher you will go in the heavenly realms. That's the mm. rule he made. And he said, the more you do good activities, the more I will send you to hell. So he reversed the law. You know, my God, it's so dangerous. So there are people who, when they uh, get power, when they don't deserve, you know, when they don't have the substance of character and spiritual wisdom inside, they will always misuse power as it has oh, happened. Yeah. With so many, Often. Yeah. It has happened with so many in the past, including the country where I stay, Germany. Okay. <laughs> so, so the thing is, then the de demigods knew that uh, situation is very critical now because if the demons drink this then the whole universe is ruined and then what do they do when they can't do something yes this is a very interesting thing the demigods do you know because they are intelligent so one of my gurus who used to say you know uh, what does it mean to be intelligent 
<laughs> intelligence does not mean necessarily that you are a great mathematician you are a great journalist you are a great scientist or you are a great uh, economist or you know 20 languages he said intelligence means to know what to do when you don't know what to do <laughs> So the demigods did not know what to do, but they were intelligent. So they still knew what to do when they don't know what to do. <laughs> I understand the, the yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then demigods were confused what to do. So then they went to Lord Vishnu and uh, they were praying to Lord Vishnu that, Oh Lord Vishnu, please protect us, you know, because they very soon these, yeah. demigods, these demons drink this uh, nectar. Yes. And then what Lord Vishnu did, he is the master. He took the form of the most beautiful woman in the entire creation to have ever born. And her name was Mohini. Mohini, the ah, word Mohini. Mohini, yeah. Yeah, Mohini means one who enchants your mind, you know, one who captivates your mind, one who makes you obsessed with her. Okay. And when God himself takes the form of a lady. Can you believe it? How beautiful she will be. <laughs> we cannot believe it because we have not seen anybody like that. <laughs> no. And then Mohini Murti, she appeared from nowhere. And when these demons, they saw this girl, you know, they were like, wow. <laughs> what is that? You know, my God, we have seen so many heavenly ladies. We have seen so many girls, but this lady is we have never seen anybody like her and then they suddenly forgot that they have this you know nectar in their hands by drinking which they can you know become kind of immortal they forgot that's what happens when we are allured by false materialistic temptations you know we forget that we have this human body where we can do spiritual practices and elevate our consciousness Yes, that's called Maya illusion. And then Mohini Murti, these are all related to Rahu. You see, this is how yeah, it yeah, happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So then Mohini Murti was going near the demons, and you know, and then one of the demons he approached Mohini Murti and asked, Oh, beautiful lady, what is the name of your father? Yes. Why he's asking father's name? Because in India, there's this tradition that yeah, yeah. if you want to marry a girl, you don't go and ask uh, ask her, you know, that uh, will you marry me? You go and you ask her who is your father so that you can go to her father and say, you know, will you give your daughter's uh, hand to me? You know, that means will you marry your daughter to me? That was the official custom. And now these are demons, you see. They're official, officially certified crooks of the society. <laughs> officially certified. But even they are having that level of culture that they they they, they did not ask Mohini Murti, you know, oh, will you marry me? They are they asked, Oh, what is the name of your father? Will you please tell me your you know, father's name? <laughs> yes. So then uh, Mohini Murti said, No, actually, you know, I don't have any father, mother, you know, I don't have any origin. She she spoke certain things. And Mohini Murti also said, you know, you should not trust me, actually. You know. <laughs> Can you imagine the ladies herself telling, you know, actually, you should not trust me, you know. But these demons were so much obsessed with her beauty, you know, that they forgot everything else. And then one of the demons, he suggested to Mohini Murti, actually, you know, we are having a big problem here. We are quarreling that who will drink this nectar, you know. So why not you do something uh, like this, that you take this and you distribute to us, you know, then we will be very happy. And then Mohini Murthy said, okay, I will distribute to you, but the demigods also helped you in getting this nectar. So if I distribute, then they will also get it. And then the demand. Then, okay, okay, no problem. Whatever you say, you know, whatever you say is fine. You know, just we just want to see and be with you. That's all. I mean, you want to give it to them, no problem, but give mm -hmm. it to us also. You know. So then the demigod sat on one side and the demon sat on the other side, and then Mohini Muti started uh, distributing this nectar slowly to both of these. Okay, 
but when she was giving it to the demons she used to change it to water okay and when she used to give it to the demigods it was that real nectar and there was one person there in the line of the demigod in the demons who was a bit doubtful <laughs> he was like uh, there is something wrong here you know? <laughs> You know, it doesn't seem so good. You know, I mean, the, it's not that good the way it seems. So then, what he did was he thought, okay, let me you know try or something. He thought, for once, let me go and sit in the side of the demigods, the devatas, and let me see what they are getting. And then what happened? This this guy he went and sat on that side. And Mohini Murti gave gave him also. That was the real nectar. <laughs> and then he took the nectar and he just drank. But as soon as he was drinking, Mohini Murti realized that no, he is not a demigod. He is a demon. And Lord Vishnu has a Sudarshan Chakra. You know, Lord Vishnu has four hands. Uh -huh. He summoned the Sudarshan Chakra. He not he she actually. <laughs> <laughs> Mohini summoned the Sudarshan Chakra in her hand and she ripped off, she severed the head of this uh, demon. Oh. But what happened? The nectar had already reached his neck. Uh -huh. All right. So he became immortal. Oh. oh and yeah. then his head was severed and you know his head was somewhere, his body was somewhere. That's um. Rahu and Ketu. Wonderful. Very interesting. Very good that you said the story. What is Rahu? Rahu is the significator of doubt. Why? Because he was doubting, right? What is going on? And what was the origin of his doubt? The origin of his doubt was he was himself in the party of the demons. It was not that he was a good person and then he was doubting, you see. It's like honesty between thieves. Have you heard of this? Yes. Yes. Five thieves, you know, they are gathering and they are saying, see, we will distribute it equally among the ourselves. Okay. <laughs> Whatever we are. Yeah. No, that is why in uh, Hindi there's a proverb or you know, there's a saying that uh, when you have money using, you know, wrong means you must be honest there. Now, man, honesty is very important when you divide money earned by dishonest means. <laughs> oh. So honest, honesty is so important that even thieves have to use it. Otherwise, they, their business will also be ruined. Not that honesty is required for good people. It's required for the demons also. And then uh, Lord Vishnu told him uh, that, all right, so now your head is there and your body is there. So the head is Rahu and the body will be Ketu. Okay. So basically, Rahu represents those desires which keep us hooked. I would use the word hooked. <laughs> hooked to material life, hooked to material pleasures. It's like, you know, there's a story one day, you know, there was a couple who got married. There was the event of wedding. And they decided, you know, we will celebrate it uh, in a ship, you know. Okay. So then the whole night, you know, they had very nice celebration. And they thought, thought next day we will go to an island. Okay. And they were uh, celebrating and they slept in the night. And they were expecting that the next morning when we get up, we will be in an island. Because the ship was supposed to reach there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they got up in the morning, all the family members, relatives, you know, they went towards the ship. And when they suddenly opened their eyes, they realized, oh my God, we are at the same place. We have not, we did not move at all. Why? Because the driver of the ship, the captain forgot to remove the anchor. So he was driving whole night, but it, the ship was... In the oh, yeah. Yeah. 